Hello everyone, thanks for joining School of the American Rifle. We have two videos in one today. We're going to do a bolt physical. This is an LMT enhanced. It's new in the packaging. And then to the left we have an LMT enhanced bolt carrier group and a 300 blackout barrel. These were out of the same factory built gun. This particular barrel, um, according to the owner, had a problem when it went into factory service because it was having extraction and ejection problems and they did some feed ramp work to it and the ramp work was really poor and it had feeding problems after that. So they did replace the barrel. LMT stood behind their work and their product. You can see the ramps look pretty bad though. We are going to check headspace with 300 blackout gauges. We're going to check out this bolt carrier group to see if we can figure out why this particular bolt carrier group is giving the owner issues. Now this is the old barrel. There's a new barrel in the gun and there is a different bolt carrier group. The new barrel and the new bolt carrier group function fine. This bolt carrier group gives e ejection and extraction problems. So this is going to be the autopsy portion. So let's go ahead and get the easier stuff out of the way first and take a look at the bolt. So LMT has their own extractor setup. The ejector does have a nice rounded edge on it. You can see the residue left over from test firing. So let's go ahead and check the firing pin hole with our go no go gauge. Go past this. No go doesn't. So we pass there. Let's check our bolt tail. That's the field. Doesn't go. No go. Does. A little start there just like all of them have been but it doesn't go in all the way so that passes let's check for magnetism we're good there all right now let's take the extractor out now we're gonna have two small springs in here there's one there's the other they are proprietary springs and you don't quite have a the same recess on this extractor so we really can't successfully use the extractor gauge. I can get a good look and see if it fits in the groove properly and it does. There's a slight secondary groove right there. So it fits and that doesn't so technically passes and no magnetism. All right gas rings on it look good. Let's go ahead and strip this other LMT carrier apart and see if this passes the gas ring test. And it does. All right, ejector on this, nice and strong. I did test it off camera. Overall, the finish on it looks good. I have dirt all over my hands, so I'm transferring more stuff. This actually came from the inside of that carrier here. It has a lot of fouling in it. Gas rings do look good. Let's go ahead and try it with the other LMT firing pin. Since it doesn't come with one, let's check what we get for protrusion. Thirty point five, we're good. Let's check to see what the diameter of the bolt support shoulder is. So let's zero this out. Five two seven three five. Five two seven three. Five two seven three five. So not bad. All right. Now, if you look at the LMT, they do have some differences in them. They have what they um, 
they, they have a modified lug here on the opposite side of the extractor. So this is where the extractor is and you lose a lug because of the extractor. So what LMT did, did is they took this lug here and they basically removed it as far as function goes. So what it does is it, it load balances these six remaining lugs. So these three and these three all now have an even load. What would happen in the past with standard AR-15 bolts is the load would be increased on these two on the opposite side of the extractor and these would be the first ones to normally break, crack, or shear. I've never seen a broken lug on an LMT bolt. So their design works. They do use a different type of material to make the bolt which makes them more costly. But let's go ahead and check headspace and then see what else we can get. Can't check that length. That's good. That's good. All right. So we have our test barrel. Let's try it with. <coughs> Let's skip right to 556. Five, Go. Passes. Let's try the field gauge. It does not rotate. <coughs> so the LMT bolt. Passes with every test that we've done. Ejector roll pin doesn't stick out. Very good. We're going to put our extractor springs back in. Put our extractor back in. Let's make sure our extractor pin moves freely. I did not check that. It does. Alright, we're going to set that off to the side. Alright, now let's get into the LMT. Alright, so let's work on the carrier first. See if we can detect anything in there. So let's... Man, it is dirty in there. I'm going to try to get some of this nastiness out of here so we can get a good look and we can gauge it out. Yeah, that's pretty nasty. I don't think we're going to be able to gauge this without doing a little bit of cleaning with a brush. So we're going to move over to the parts washer to try to get some of this nastiness out of here because this isn't going to work out. So let's move over to the parts washer. We have a lot of cake doing fouling in here. What we have in here is simple green precision in this tank with water. Simple green precision or the HD is safe for aluminum. This is an aluminum that we're working on but since I work on AR-15s I use degreasers that's safe for aluminum if I drop it in here. Now I do have some regular simple green in the shop too for general purpose cleaning. Right now we have the HD or the aviation grade in here right now. But this carrier is pretty dirty. Even with the scrubbing, it doesn't look like we're getting much out. Try one more time. Grab my air compressor hose. It might get loud on the camera.
of the bench. We didn't get all of the fouling off, but we got enough off to do some better examination. getting some nastiness but at least we should be able to get a, a clean snapshot get another swab buy these from ball from brown else but not too bad when you get them by the thousand Pretty boring, I'm sure, but we have to get this clean if we're going to take a look. So let's go straight to the bore scope. Let's take a look at what we're going to be gauging. All right, in we go. That's the cat messing with boxes. We have some filing there now this is the gas ring run right here I believe yep we have three ports on the LMT set of two the gas ring run is very smooth. We're getting some weird interference in the camera here. Alright, let's look at our bolt tail seal. It's a little bit rough there. That one image right there, that's one of the carrier key screws. You can see the threads, it's the bottom of the screw. We'll find the other one. Let's see, where are we at? There's our gas port. Yeah, the other one's hidden by carbon. And fire residue, so we're not going to find that. All right. <clears throat> So nothing out of the ordinary in there. Let's go ahead and check it with our three bore gauges. It's the first green, second green. We'll take the yellow, so that's a good bolt support shoulder. Gas ring run, first green, second green. I don't think it's gonna go on the yellow. No, it doesn't, so gas efficient. Let's check the bolt tail. First green gauge. Wow, look at that. Tight. It barely fits the first go. Probably one of the tightest seals that I've seen. So, very, very gas efficient on the bolt tail. Let's gauge the gas key. No go does not go in. Go does go in. Let's check for alignment. Passes. Set some things aside so we know what we've checked. Didn't use that, didn't use that. All right. <clears throat> Let's measure the overall length of the carrier. Zero it out. Six, seven, three, almost. But these do have a little bit of a nose on the front here. 
so they are going to measure longer than a standard carrier. You can actually see where they make the impact marks on the barrel extension. Set that aside. Let's do a reverse torque test. Fits fit. We are set at 30 inch pounds. Pass. Pass. Haven't found anything so far that stands out. All right, we had a little bit of camera problem there. Let's continue on. All right, where were we at? We're going to check. We did the carrier length. We can't do the weed eater line test with this because we have some angled ports in here. Let's check our bolt tail. It starts to go in, but it does not completely go in, so that passes. I already checked that bolt. Let's check headspace with the 300 blackout gauges and the used bolt. So let's go with 300 blackout go. Passes. No go. Closes on no go, which does not mean that it's unsafe. It just means that it has slightly longer headspace. We do not want it to close on the field. And it doesn't. We did. We can get it to close on the field. Watch the lugs. Let's see if I can get it to rotate. There we go. The lugs are locked in. So the barrel fails headspace. Or the bolt does. And we have a new bolt, so let's see what it is. The bolt won't close on the field gauge. Let's see if it closes on the no-go gauge. It does close on the no-go. So the barrel is definitely the main issue with, head, with the headspace being a problem. But the new bolt does read a little bit more tight. So we have a headspace problem with this barrel. All right, let's check firing pin protrusion. Tip on this looks good. Proper movement. Let's see what our protrusion is. Zero three one five. So protrusion's good. Let's check our shoulder. Five two six six. So we lost about 0 .001 with use. You can see that the shoulder is worn a little bit on it. Not a deal breaker. Gas rings are good. Bolt looks good. No protrusion of the ejector pin. Roll pin that is. Let's take the extractor out. Extractor claw feels good. Passes to go and no go. What does concern me, and I don't have a test for this, is this one spring does look shorter than the other. So it appears we have some springs that may have worn, depending on round count. So maybe this is part of the ejection and extraction problems. This is brand new springs. You 
can see that they're a little shorter, but I don't think that that's the problem. So I wouldn't say that those springs are bad. Put that back. Let's put these back. Let's see if I can feel what the extractor feels like. Good tension there. Definitely more there. So these springs maybe are at the end of their service life for the extractor. The ejector though, a whole different story. The ejector spring is very weak on this. So between the springs and the ejector, this could be part of the problem in conjunction with the headspace. The headspace is long, it's going to have more difficulty with function because the brass is going to stretch. So I believe what we have going on here with this is weak ejector spring, marginal extractor springs, and we have excessive headspace. It closes on a field gauge, makes it unsafe to fire. The cam pin doesn't exhibit any severe wear on it. Cam fit pin feels good in the bolt, not a lot of wiggle. Firing pin retaining pin looks good. Firing pin has a little bit of chatter in the back right here, but that's normal. The tip looks good on it. Passes these cages. All right, so overall, I believe what we found out on this autopsy is we have excessive headspace and marginal springs. So I'll talk to the owner, see what he wants to do about the springs. He's going to have to get with LMT about the extractor springs, but the ejector spring I can replace. This barrel is definitely no good. It has field headspace specs. So I hope you found this video educational, and thanks for watching.